The second reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. The God who meets us. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is is with everyone born of the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, may the flame of your love touch my lips and our hearts, that your word of grace and truth may be spoken and heard this day. Amen. Today we celebrate the wonder of God. The God who is bigger than our minds can possibly imagine or grasp and yet is closer than our heartbeat and the breath from our lips. The God who is so great and vast in his care and imagination and yet at heart is love pure and simple as Christians we name God as Trinity Father Son and Holy Spirit creator Savior and sustainer one God in three persons holy and blessed And this is not some mathematical puzzle that will get us into trouble. How is one three and three one? It's not some academic theology, though books upon books have been written on the theology of the Trinity. But it is at its heart, who do we say God is? Who do we say God is? And not just that, but who do we say we are if we are made in God's image? It is a question of identity. The identity of God and the identity of God's children, God's creation. And for me, the Trinity, God the Trinity, speaks above all of unity and diversity. Unity and diversity. And the two are crucial. If we have only unity, it is uniformity and something dull. If we only have diversity, it is division and destructive but God somehow brings unity and diversity together and that's what we celebrate today as we celebrate the Trinity unity and diversity is not just about God it is about us as human beings and us as part of the whole created order where we try to get one thing and forget the other, then we get into trouble as a human race. 
where we try to impose a unity and expect everyone to conform to what we think a human being is about. Then we go to disaster. But if we just accept diversity and let it become division, then we're in trouble too. The picture that comes to mind is a story I heard recently about a man who got into cherries and cherry blossom. His name was Collingwood Ingram, but he became known as Cherry Ingram because of his obsession with Japanese cherry blossom. He was born in 1880 and visited Japan in 1902 and 1907 and discovered magnificent cherry trees and all the different types of cherry trees there. He discovered two of those trees in his family garden in Kent and he fell in love with cherry blossom. But when he went back to Japan in 1926, he saw that many of the old cherry trees had been neglected or disappeared. And one particular cloned hybrid had started to dominate. It was almost a sign of the, the kind of industrialization that was going on in Japan at that time. There was a kind of dominant movement that wanted everything to conform. And this ultimate cherry blossom was the ideal. And all other cherries were to go. It was only through Cherry Ingram that after the Second World War, other varieties were reintroduced from England to Japan. And that diversity was recaptured. And today, Cherry Ingram is honoured in England and Japan. We need diversity. We cannot go the way of conformity and uniformity. In our world, there are constant threats to diversity, to biodiversity, as human beings make more and more species extinct, or human diversity. Powerful nations and ideologies squash opposition and impose conformity. Big businesses drive out small competitors and impose their own rules. And alongside this suppression of diversity is paradoxically an increasing division, a division among human beings, an aggressive suspicion of those who are different to us, black and white, male and female, and transgender, Jew and Arab, East and West, Muslim and Christian, English and Scot, East and West, woke and anti-woke. All these labels divide rather than express diversity. Somehow we need to bring those varieties together. We know that within our own nation, cultural divisions are growing. And whatever you think in terms of Brexit, it caused greater divisions within the four nations. Racial abuse has increased. There's no going back on that decision. But somehow we need to bring people together those who voted out or in, is irrelevant now. We are one nation, or four nations in one kingdom, and somehow we need to grow up and grow together. 
And above all, as a human race, we face huge challenges, be it viral or climate or species extinction. They require us to learn to work together, despite and even alongside our differences. We need a rebirth. And Jesus spoke of that rebirth as he spoke to that great teacher and leader in his community, Nicodemus, who'd come at night time to meet this radical teacher, Jesus, and had, had his mind blown away by Jesus saying, you need to be born again. You need to start all over and be born with that spirit, that spirit of compassion, and love, and truth. This is a rebirth not simply of individuals, but it is a rebirth of communities. It's a rebirth of humanity itself. Contemplate God in all his unity and diversity. Contemplate yourself made in God's image, male and female made in God's image, made to reflect that unity and that diversity. Contemplate the wonder of God and allow that to change your attitudes to others, that each one of us may be born again, reflecting that love of God. There's a simple song from Argentina that has these words, and I'd like to teach, teach it to you. You can sing it in your heart, in your mind. And it goes like this. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. Holy 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 my heart my heart adores you my heart is glad to say the words you are holy lord Our final words of scripture. Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. The God who listens. O all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God.